Uh, so my name is John Linden. Um, thank you, thank you for adding me at the last second here. I, I kind of jumped in a car and drove down here from LA. Uh, so, uh, so I'm on, yeah. I was also at Activision for a long time. I ran one of the game studios at Activision. So Activision has nine game studios. I ran uh, one of the nine. So I was a studio head there. We were mostly on Call of Duty. So we we shipped about four Call of Duties. And we did a game called Skylanders. So I kind of had the big studio experience. Left there, did a did a smaller uh, mobile company called Seismic. Then we did a game called Marvel Strike Force. So it was a big free to play. So we had the mobile side as well. It's it's a it's a big game this year and then sold that to Niantic. So I've been fascinated by blockchain for a while. Um, I think there's some really fun stuff. I think well, I'm going to try and take a little different approach so I don't say the same stuff you did because I think that there's a lot of overlap in what's happening right now. But but I think what's what's really fascinating right now to me is, is blockchain as a technology, not necessarily as a way of life. And I know I'm, I'm walking into an Ethereum meetup and I'm mostly built on EOS and I'm funded by EOS. So, so I'll, I'm going to keep, keep it to blockchain agnostic here. But, but uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways to kind of achieve the same problems, right? And I think that's what's really exciting about what's happening. And to me, to me blockchain is a, is a technology, right? And, and that's what we have to view it as. It's not a way of life. And, and there's a lot of people that are viewing this as kind of a way of life, and it's, no, it's Ethereum all the way, or it's EOS all the way, or it's Tron all the way, or whatever. But I think, I think what's, if you keep that in mind, there's some really fascinating things that'll come out of this world, right? And particularly with gaming, the reason we jumped into blockchain was to, to really kind of bring uh, kind of a new experience, I think, to players. And that's where we're, we're really focused around that. So when kids find out that I did Call of Duty or find out that I did Skylanders, you get a lot of, when I grew up, I want to be a game designer. Right? And while I'd love to think there's this massive generation of game designers coming, I don't think that's really what they mean. I think what they mean is that they live in this world that we're building, and they, they, they want to have a stake. They want to have a bigger role. They want to have something. They want to contribute to these worlds. And I think blockchain and, and some of the things we're working on can help do that. And I think that's what gets really exciting is the ability to let players have this ownership, right? So, so the ability that they can have right now in, in our last game, we did a Marvel game, and it's, it's, it's making a ton of money. It's hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars this year. But when you buy Spider-Man, and I probably should have known being recorded in my last company would probably kill me for this, but when you buy Spider-Man, you're not really buying anything, right? You're, you're buying personal satisfaction, right? And that's cool. I mean, personal satisfaction is awesome, right? But there's limits to that. And then you suddenly, the second you buy Spider-Man, it's gone, right? But what if you can, actually, you can actually become an expert in something in the game, right? You love these games. You play in these worlds. Um, and what if you could actually kind of make a living in this down the road, right? And that's a little further out, right? There's a lot of regulations. There's a lot of things to identify. But what if you can start you know, having, having this ability to do something different? What if you get a race car in a game, and you own that race car now, right? But now what if you can take that race car out of the game and change it, right? And you become the world's best spoiler maker, right? You become the world's best. I, I have two daughters, and I come up with this, this is a terrible idea, but I come up with this rainbow unicorn spoiler, right? I now have the only item in the world that does that. That starts making some interesting opportunities, right? So, and it's interesting for a lot of reasons. Like, there's a lot of people streaming games now, right? So if you could have your own item that nobody else in the world has, that gets really fascinating, right? It helps me as a living even. I'm not necessarily buying and selling items, but I have something nobody else has. I have an audience that are watching me play or watching to see what I can do, and I have something nobody else has, right? Those are some interesting opportunities I think we can do with blockchain, right? And, that's, and I think the tech's coming incredibly fast, right? What if you could uh, become an artist, like the art you mentioned before? We talk to brands all the time. We talk to uh, content creators all the time. What if you can give them a say in the world, right? And it's not gonna be every game. I think that's one thing that's really important. It's not, not every game's gonna do this, but a lot of them will. I think this whole idea of what we call player-owned economies will come to dominate gaming in the future, right? Because it's a better, it's kind of a better opportunity for players, right? You have a better return uh, as, as a player. If I can have an item and I don't lose that money the second I spend it, right? It, but there's actually, there could be a future for that item. It might go up. It might not be worth as much as you paid for it, right? Just just like items in the real world, right? But there could be there could be a return on that. It becomes a better place for people to, to kind of play in these worlds, right? That, I think that's fascinating. And the other piece, again, what we're really focused on a lot of is bringing content creators in. What if, what if I have an art piece and there's a game that fits my art style, right? It'd be pretty awesome if I could put my art into a game, right? What if then that game, that art piece in the game sells 400 times over the life of that object? What if as the creator of that content, I can get a little slice of that every time, right? I now have a new income stream that I didn't have before. And to me, those are things that I think are fascinating about blockchain and where we're really focused right now. So again, I don't, want, I don't want to take too much time here, but I just want to kind of share a little bit of our vision. And we really view this as, as a way to bring a bigger addressable market to this already huge addressable market, right? So as you mentioned, uh, you block, uh, games is a $100 billion industry this year. Activision alone is now, it's now a bigger than all of Hollywood, just Activision. They make more money than all of the Hollywood box office. 
pretty freaking amazing, right? That's pretty amazing. It's a new medium and it's a new world that's growing. And, and I think what we can do now is we can kind of bring this opportunity to a lot more people because right now it's the, it's the, it's the Epic Games that are making a lot of money right now. It's the NCSofts out of Korea. NCSoft has a game that's doing almost as much as Fortnite in Korea, right? So what if we can kind of spread in that wealth? What if players can start contributing into these worlds? What if content creators, what if you have an idea and now you can view gaming as a platform and something you can contribute to rather than I'm gonna just go pay my five bucks for this item in a game, right? That's what we think the potential of blockchain is and we're really excited kind of for the future of that. So I'll leave it there. I try. I was trying not to talk too specific about what we're doing, but uh, like I said, we'll open it up.